Hello. Welcome to another video by the Danfoss Software Product Application Engineer Team. In this video, we'd like to introduce you to the Danfoss HMR111 CAN rotary device. Mostly, we're going to be interested in the software programming aspect of the HMR and guide, so we'll concentrate on the compliance blocks. But first, just a couple of words about the physical device itself. The device's central feature is the rotary encoder, allowing for bi-directional continuous input. The dial contains a push-button selector, which combined with the seven surrounding buttons gives eight total input buttons. The device incorporates multiple customizable LED lights for operator feedback. The LEDs have multiple blink possibilities and a full range of color possibilities. The device can be ordered with standard or customized icons, including having your company logo on the center button. Let's look a little closer at the LEDs. There are three lights per button, apart from the rotary button, which only has a backlight. The three lights are two indicator lights at the outside edge of the button and a backlight for the button icon. In the image above, it looks as though there's only one indicator light because both of the indicator lights are set to green, but in fact there are two parts. In fact, the two indicator lights always have to share colors, but they can have completely different blink patterns. And although they share a color, the colors for all the other lights can be completely independent and any color under the rainbow. The color to be displayed is stored in an index, and then that light is assigned to that color index. Blink patterns are likewise highly customizable and independent between indicator light 1, 2, and the backlight. They can be solid, off, or on, blink fast, medium, or slow, and they can either have a sharp off-on transition or a breathing pattern where they increase in intensity. Finally, the pattern can be inverted so that one indicator comes on while the other side is off. So how is all this achieved in Guide? Through compliance blocks, like for other Danfoss hardware. As a reminder, compliance blocks can be thought of as drivers to communicate with the device from your Guide program. The HMR is a bit unique in that it has not just one compliance block, but five, which is one reason why we're doing this video. Having five blocks is necessary because of the highly configurable nature of the device, but don't despair you can probably get away with using just one or two of the blocks. The five are only necessary if you're going to be doing a lot of modifications of colors, blink codes, and brightness while the application is running, which is possible but won't be done by everyone. There's one compliance block for feedback from the device, specifically from the buttons and rotary encoder. This is the HMR111 receive compliance block. The other four blocks are used to manipulate the LED colors, blinks, and brightness. We'll look at them briefly one by one. The first block to look at is the HMR receive block, which receives and presents the button inputs. This may be the only block you need because the HMR input device is primarily for inputs, and all the inputs, button and the rotary encoder, come through this block. Programming them is exactly like programming the physical buttons on a display. When the value is true, the button is being pressed, false when it's not. Like for the display buttons, they don't report transitions, so you have to add a negative or positive transition if you want to trigger on a button press or release. It's also a CAN device, so you can monitor the updates and faults, but the basic programming is identical. The rotary outputs a value corresponding to the number of clockwise or counterclockwise clicks since the count was reset, which can be done with a service tool or another block. If you only wanted to use the HMR to get button feedback and the LEDs were either off or in a constant state, the receive block is the only one you'd need to use. For instance, if you just had a constant backlight on the button icons. You'll probably want to have some indicators for the operator though, for instance, flash a light when he pushes a button. The easiest way to do that is to use the basic control block. 
This block sends color and blink information for all the buttons in one message. Since it uses only one CAN message to send the information, there's a limited range of options that can be chosen. For colors, only the first three color indexes can be used for both the indicator lights and the backlight, in addition to the no change command. Similarly, the blink can only be set to off, solid on, or blinking at medium speed, in addition to the no change. The no change is significant because the message is set automatically on a set schedule as long as the block is enabled, making implementation and guide particularly easy. So we said the HMR was easy to program with receive and basic control blocks. Let's take a little bit closer look uh, at a program to see what we mean by that. So let's say we have a machine using the HMR and we're gonna be setting the LEDs on the HMR to reflect reflect three states that the machine can be in. State zero, when the machine is idle, and in that state we're gonna have yellow indicator lights, solid indicator lights, and white for the icons. Then we'll have state one, which is normal operation, and in that state we'll indicate it by flashing green indicator lights and white icons. And then state two, when we have an error, and we'll indicate that by turning all the indicators red with indicator one for each button being solid and indicator two blinking with the icons also being red. So three states, state zero, which is idle, indicators yellow, state one in operation, uh, green blinking indicators, and state uh, two, which is an error where we make everything red. So how would we implement, implement that using the receive and basic control blocks? First, uh, to go between the states, we're gonna use the HMR itself, use the buttons on the HMR to uh, change the states. And once again, as I said, this is the easiest part. We put our receive block in, it's going to be getting all the information on the state of the buttons. And we'll look for either when the, in the encoder is uh, moving. So the absolute count is going up. That means it's moving uh, clockwise or down counterclockwise, or we'll use the arrow buttons on the uh, HMR. So we get the information, button information from the HMR. We're going to move on transitions so first we've got to establish our counterclockwise uh, and clockwise, so absolute count rising and falling uh, from our encoder. So we look at the previous loop and see whether it's bigger or less, and that tells us whether they're uh, turning a counterclockwise or clockwise. Then we get the release. In this case, we'll make a transition if they push on the uh, uh, indicator icons either uh, forward or reverse or up and down and we'll change the state on the release of it and then we have to keep track of our state so here's where we keep track of our state we only have three states we're dealing with zero one and two and we transition between them either when the encoder is rising so moving clockwise uh, or button two or five is released, or counterclockwise and button one or three is released. So that's simple how we change our state. And then the programming of the LEDs is equally simple. We'll take our three states, whichever one we're in, uh, we're gonna display which state we're in on a display. And then for the indicator colors, we just uh, set the signal values which are passed to our basic control block here. So as a reminder, the color indexes have default colors and for the backlights, for instance, the default color is zero. So here in state one, which we set as our idle, where we want the backlight to be white, we set the color to be zero. The indicator color uh, indicator color, uh, color index zero is green, 
one is yellow and two is red. So we wanted to choose the yellow for idle. So we set the indicator color to one. Uh, for the state, we wanted them to be solid for both the indicator and the backlight. So for both of uh, the indicators, we set it to one, which is solid. So uh, that gets passed to our basic control block. And like I said, that's all we have to do is pass the values to the block. The actual sending of the message is done automatically on a schedule here. By default, it's done at 100 milliseconds. So that's all the programming that has to be done for the first state. And then we would go through for our other two states. So our second state was going to be blinking green with a backlight of solid white. So we leave the background color the same. Our indicator color is going to change to green, which, as we said, by default in the color indexes, that's zero. Our state, we said, is going to be blinking. And that's two. And then same thing for our third state. Now, this is just three states, but you can imagine you could have as many states here as you want that you want to implement for different conditions the machine is in. So that's it for the programming part. So now let's look and see what that uh, results in. So let's see what this gives when we download to our uh, display and our HMR. As a reminder, we had three states we were implementing. Uh, state zero, which was our idle state with a solid yellow indicator and white icons. State one, which was our operational state, blinking green indicators and solid white icons. And then state two, which was our error state where everything is red, backlight and indicator lights, and one of the indicator lights being solid, the other blinking. So, and this is what it looks like once we've downloaded it. Remember, we have, we're moving between our states using the uh, button feedback from the HMR, either the encoder going clockwise or counterclockwise, or using the directional buttons on top or on the side. So when we're in our idle state, you see we have our yellow indicator lights as we wanted as we programmed. Uh, going to state one, we have our blinking green and state two, our uh, air state with our everything in red, all the LEDs in red with one of them being solid and one being blinking, which gives this effect. So uh, once again, of course, this is a very simple demonstration. Uh, remember that you can use, we were only using the basic control block and um, only using the default color indexes used, which are uh, red, yellow, and green for the indicator lights and white, red, and green for the background icons. But you can use any colors you want, um, any blink patterns you want using the other blocks, which we'll look at in really briefly uh, right now. If you want to set more complex blink patterns, like a breathing pattern or inversing the blinking of the two indicators on a button, or changing the blink speed, or if you want to have more than the first three index colors for your LEDs, then you have to go to the advanced control block. The messages from this block allow to use the whole range of light and blink possibilities, but each message controls only one button. They also have to be explicitly sent, not sent on a schedule, as for the basic block. The LED colors and blink patterns will stay as commanded until changed with another command, either from the basic control block or another advanced control message. The advanced control is also one you'd use to reset the rotary encoder count. The last two commands we saw the basic and advanced control blocks control the light and blink behavior on a button level. The next two, the color config and brightness config commands, control device level settings. The color config block sets the values for the 32 color indexes used by the device. Remember that there are 16 color indexes used for the 
indicator lights and 16 for the backlight. You can load any RGB value into each color index, which will then be the color displayed by any buttons using that index. There are default colors set for each index, which can be found in the HMR technical information document, but they can be changed to any RGB color. Remember when the index is changed, any button's LED pointing to that index will also be changed. You may have noticed in the last section that the color configuration block takes RGB inputs to set the color indexes. Just a quick reminder that we have a block in the utility library to convert color values expressed in HSL to RGB should you need it. The last compliance block for the HMR is also used for setting global device attributes and in this case, it's the brightness or intensity, the LEDs, that can be modified. Normally, these would probably all be changed together, for instance, to decrease the brightness in a low light environment, uh, but it's possible to change the RGB intensity levels independently. That's it for the compliance box, but we wanted to mention also that there's a service tool application provided which allows you to change device level attributes such as node address and baud rate. You can also use the service tool application to set the color indexes manually instead of using the compliance blocks. So we hope this video makes the use of the different compliance blocks available for the HMR a bit clearer. Most users will probably be able to implement their needs using just the receive block for button feedback and the basic control block to set the colors and blink status, with the other blocks available for additional flexibility. We think the ease of programmability combined with the robust and versatile nature of the HMR will make it a valuable HMI device for your machine. We hope you found this video helpful. For more information on Plus One software, Remember to visit our community forum or contact the help desk using the web form at the URL indicated here. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see our latest video releases. Thank you for your attention.